And for example, with the polar bears, there's how many years has we have we been told over and over and over again that the polar bears are threatened with extinction because the ice is disappearing from the Arctic Ocean. And the, first off, the fact is that if, if the Arctic Ocean was completely covered in ice, there'd be no polar bears because there'd be no plankton to feed the fish, to feed the seals, to feed the bears. And so they're right off the bat, we've all been fooled into thinking that there'd be more polar bears if there was more ice. But the polar bears have to eat seals. And the only way there can be seals is if there's fish. And the only way there can be fish is if there's plankton. So it would be good if at least half the Arctic was ice free in order to provide food for these bears. And, it, and there was more ice 40 years ago than there is now. But actually during the 1940s, 30s and 40s, the ice was as low as it is now. But they always forget about that in the chart. They started at 1970. And even though we know what the ice coverage was before that, uh, they, they just ignore that. And, and it's, it's been going up and down all through history. Uh, and, and actually there, there was no ice on the Arctic until about two million years ago at the onset of the Pleistocene Ice Age. Uh, before that, the, the, you know, the, there were giant camels roaming in subtropical forests on Canada's Arctic islands about five million years ago. And for the 250 million years before that, there was no ice on the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. The, the, the Antarctic started building up ice much sooner, about 30 million years ago, than the Arctic did, which was not till about three or four million years ago. And that's a blink in nature's eye. I mean, the world is 4.6 billion years old, and for 95 plus percent of that time, there's been no ice anywhere. The Earth has been in a what they call the greenhouse ages, much more than it's been in what's called the ice house ages which are the ice ages. And there's not been many ice ages, and some of them have lasted for 50 million years. Uh, this one's only two and a half million years old, so it might last for another 45 million years, who knows? We have no idea. Thankfully, we're in an interglacial period now. So the story of the polar bears is that in 1960, they had been reduced to about 6,000 around the whole Arctic because of unrestricted hunting. No one ever mentions that. It's all about the ice, but no, it's not. It was they were driven down to low numbers by big game hunters who were going to the Arctic now that you could fly up there easy and get a guide and take you out and get your rug for your floor or your wall or your hanging for the wall of a polar bear. And uh, they'd been reduced to a s small number and there was great concern about this. So all of the Arctic nations met in 1973 and signed a treaty to end unrestricted hunting of polar bears. Some countries banned polar bear killing altogether. I, do, I believe some of the Scandinavian countries like Norway, I think, banned it altogether. Uh, Canada allows a very small number of polar bears to be hunted each year uh, in order to provide uh, income for Inuit guides who are required if you go and hunt a polar bear with a license. It's a lottery, I think, that allows people to go and kill a polar bear. Not interested in that myself, but uh, the, the uh, population has grown to at least 25,000 from 6,000 since the treaty was signed. That is never covered in the media. Right. The issue that, that the fact that there is a treaty that limits the killing of polar bears to a very small number or even bans it altogether. And Susan Crockford of Victoria on Vancouver Island uh, is the person I go to for my information about polar bears. And so the, 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 the polar bears are not in any trouble whatsoever. <laughs>